Are you ready to expand your horizons and learn something completely new? In today's episode, we'll take you on an exciting journey into the unknown and reveal secrets you never learned in school about the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. You'll be surprised at the incredible discoveries scientists have made in the vastness of space. So buckle up, get ready for a roller coaster ride of fascination, and stay tuned because you're guaranteed to be amazed at what else is out there to discover. Let's dive into the world of the enigmatic moons together and get to the bottom of the mystery. The Mystery of the Moons It's absolutely true that organic life most likely cannot exist on gas planets like Saturn or Jupiter. Rock planets, which carry supplies of water, are more promising candidates for the emergence or existence of extraterrestrial life. Not only on Venus and Mars, the discovery of simple life forms becomes more and more probable. Our solar system holds with numerous rock modes, further worlds ready, on which very probably simple living beings, such as microbes and algae, or even fish exist. Jupiter and Saturn are huge planets and their moons are correspondingly large. Ganymede is almost as large as Mars and together Titan, the largest moons of the solar system, are even larger than the planet Mercury. In juxtaposition, many of the large moons don't seem much different from small planets, and perhaps they were at some point. To date, little is known about the formation of the moons. According to the latest scientific knowledge, it cannot be completely ruled out that the moons were once small planets that then became bound to the gravity of the gas giants. Maybe you even learned something about the moons in school. Then, the teachers probably told you, too dry, too cold, too much radiation, or too toxic. Life on these celestial bodies is impossible. But we'll show you now how this is complete nonsense. Life impossible? Or is it? On Earth, we still assume that life needs a blue sky, pleasant temperatures, water, and sunshine. Yet our own planet is full of evidence that life seeks other ways, too. Science announced not so long ago that it had found radioactivity-eating bacteria. Yes, you heard right. And there is by far not only one kind of bacteria that can do that. The best-known one has been named Deinococcus radiodurans after this special property. These bacteria are able to use ionizing radiation like gamma rays or x-rays to gain energy and survive. The microorganisms are able to survive radiation doses thousands of times higher than the lethal dose for humans. These bacteria are true marvels of nature because they can repair damage to their DNA caused by radiation and thus regenerate themselves. There are also other bacteria that are found near radioactive sources such as uranium mines, or nuclear power plants. Some of these bacteria can absorb heavy metals such as uranium and plutonium into their cells and use them as an energy source. In Yellowstone National Park and in many other places on Earth with hot and sometimes corrosive geothermal springs, algae species and microorganisms occur that can cope with both the heat and the toxins just fine. Under thick layers of ice in the Arctic, Bacteria have been discovered that have been frozen there for thousands, perhaps even millions of years. After thawing, these simple life forms, which ultimately gave rise to all life on Earth, begin to metabolize and reproduce again. But by no means, only extremely resolute bacteria can thrive under circumstances that are generally considered hostile to life. If we look into the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth, Aquatic animals such as jellyfish, small octopus, and fish live there that are never illuminated by even a ray of sunlight. Nevertheless, algae, lichens, and microcrustaceans thrive there as well, serving as food for the larger invertebrates. To claim that there can be no life on icy moons or on moons that carry methane instead of water is simply wrong. Bacteria on the journey through the universe? Today, in school books, it's actually still taught 
that it's a miracle or a rarity that bacteria originated on Earth, of all places, and that it's inexplicable how these got onto the Earth. Allegedly, microorganisms cannot survive in the cosmos, but this is not true either. The tardigrade is a small creature that has been discovered on the surface of space shuttles and probes that have been in space. Living bacteria have been detected on the outer surface of the ISS, surviving three years in space where there is no oxygen and supposedly no food for these creatures. Bacteria seem to have an incredible adaptability. If there is no food, they simply fast and survive in a dormant state, or they switch their metabolism to whatever is there. Basically, the entire evolution of life on Earth has demonstrated this incredible mutability. Even if today most of the more complex living beings depend on oxygen, water, and food, it's always conceivable that certain organisms can also adapt to completely new conditions. All these facts prove we can never exclude that there is no life on moons or exoplanets, which have no water and allegedly optimal conditions therefore. Saturn's moon Titan Titan looks at first a little bit like a greenish Earth. The moon has an atmosphere, landscapes of mountains and valleys, and bodies of water. However, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest moon in the solar system is a bit different on closer inspection. The dense atmosphere consists mainly of nitrogen and methane. What appears to be rock is largely formed from frozen methane and ethane. Titanium lakes and rivers carried mostly liquid methane and ethane instead of water. After the discovery of these facts, the disappointment on Earth was great. Before clear measurement data confirmed methane cycles instead of water, Titan was the great hope for the discovery of first extraterrestrial life forms. But not all scientists gave up hope immediately. Today, it's suspected that there may be microbial life on Titan after all perfectly adapted to the conditions. Experiments showed that bacteria can survive in the lab even on methane. Saturn's moon Enceladus Saturn's moon Enceladus is a highly active icy moon. The surface is icy cold, but ice volcanism and numerous geysers indicate that deeper layers of the moon are warmer and may have a hot core. The moon with a diameter of about 500 kilometers, could have liquid water oceans beneath thick layers of ice. And the likelihood of life cavorting in these waters is very high. NASA's Enceladus Life Finder mission is currently being planned to search for signs of life in Enceladus's water fountains and subsurface ocean within the next 10 years. Jupiter's moons, Ganymede and Callisto. Jupiter's moon Ganymede, despite its smaller size, very likely has more salt water than our Earth. In 2018, using data that came from the Galileo spacecraft, scientists even found evidence of the presence of organic material on the surface of Ganymede. They suspect that these organic molecules could be formed by the interaction of energetic particles from Jupiter's magnetic field with the surface of the moon. Precisely because Jupiter emits extreme magnetic forces, it was long assumed that life could not exist on Ganymede. But if bacteria on Earth love radioactivity and even feed on it, we cannot rule out the possibility that life forms exist that defy the extreme conditions on Ganymede or are even perfectly adapted to them, prevail, and could develop. Ganymede will also be better explored in the coming years. NASA's Europa Clipper will take a closer look at Ganymede and Callisto in addition to Jupiter's largest moon. Callisto is the second largest moon in the solar system. The moon's surface is mainly a mixture of water ice and rock. There is also evidence of subsurface oceans of liquid water. Jupiter's moon Europa Europa is the fourth largest moon of Jupiter and one of the most promising candidates for the presence of life in the solar system. The moon is about 3,100 kilometers in diameter and is composed primarily of rock and an icy mantle, beneath which a vast ocean of liquid salt water is believed to exist.
Geothermal energy suggests a hot core, and overall this moon also probably carries more water than Earth. In the depths of these waters, could romp, despite the comparatively only very sparse light, similarly as in the Mariana Trench, dozens of life forms like springs, fish, and also completely different, so far unknown life forms. The launch of NASA's Europa Clipper mission is scheduled for later this decade. The Europa Clipper will be equipped with the latest technologies and instruments to explore the moon from orbit. Cameras, radar, and spectroscopy instruments will study the surface and ocean properties. A special plasma instrument will study Europa's electrical environment. Drill made in Germany on its way into space. The Europa mission also envisions a lander to search for life on the surface of the moon. Drills are currently being developed around the world that can penetrate the ice layers to take samples, or lower camera modules, into the liquid water layers. NASA is not the only one currently working on probes and drilling instruments. Europe is also active. The JUICE mission of the European Space Agency, ESA, will also send drills to moons where life is suspected. Drilling technology for these missions is already being tested in the Arctic and Antarctic. They must be able to penetrate through the ice layer and then take samples of material from the oceans below without causing contamination that would lead to misinterpretation of the results. Among the tools being developed for these missions are thermal drills that heat the ice surface to melt the ice and robotic drills equipped with a variety of tools and sensors to drill precisely and collect comprehensive data. Major German companies such as OHB of Bremen and HPS of Friedrichshafen on Lake Constance are working with NASA and ESA. In addition to developing special drilling technologies, these space companies also ensure that the materials used in the drills are fit for use under extreme conditions and for years of flight through space. Now, tell us what you think. What do you think these drills could really find under the moon's thick layers of ice? We welcome all ideas and discussions on the topic. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time at Simply Space.